All right, guys, last Monday of August. Wow, where did the summer go? Like, so crazy. Um, I wanted to remind you guys, and obviously Mac and Natalie jump in if I forget anything, that we're still doing the flash sale. So like, even if you've done nothing with it so far, you can literally hop off this call on fire, because I know Jess is gonna give you so many great tips and tricks and go run with it. So the flash sale's up through Friday. It's up to you to utilize it. Mackenzie especially and Maggie have put in so much work to it. Like, let's use it. Let's blow it up. Let's rock success club. Let's end the summer stronger than we started. That's what I keep telling myself. So um, it's up to you to, to put it to use. The other thing coming down the pipeline is pumpkin spice shakeology, which I can't wait. Like I need to stock up majorly. So first and foremost, you stock up. And this is something I've been telling my team. If you like your team's going to do what you do. So when you get on board with the new launches and the new things and you go all in with it first, your team's going to do the same. So it's our responsibility, you know, over the weekend and going into kind of the fall season. I don't know about y'all, but I'm seeing all over my stories, people like putting up their fall stuff already, which is, while but it's a good reminder that people want it and so it's our job to give them the option to even know it exists um the other stuff going on the promo codes are still available so as many promo codes as you use this month you get next month so it's really important to like again get new people in the flash sale as much as your current challengers and coaches um and customers so that you can get even more promo codes to use next month. Um, what else? The bobbleheads for Success Club. Also, three-day refresh is still on sale. So that's another thing you can have in your back pocket to use in the flash sale because it's part of some of the packages. Did I miss any announcements? Anything you want to add? Or Maggie, too. I didn't see you there. Um, I wanted to start off some recognition then, and then we'll move to Jess's. So I wanted to shout out Audrey, who's been teaching Pio live in Philly. I'm super duper proud of you. Even though she's only had a couple girls come to her class, she's been doing it consistently. So super proud of you for being here. And Jessica, SC8, has been blowing up the flash sale her first month as a coach. Super duper proud of you. Who else has recognition? Oh, I was just going to say Maggie's thing real quick. Um, Maggie said a reminder to still send her, um, if you watched the team call last week, and if you didn't watch it, send her your form so we can get the pods together for September. Okay, go ahead, Nat. I was going to give a shout out to my friend, Maridia. We had an awesome call a couple of days ago and just really getting to know her better and what her goals were and just kind of feeling like understanding her fears. Uh, in this business and just seeing her really step out of her comfort zone has been really awesome. So I'm so proud of you. Anyone else? And go Jess Gill. You're going to kill it. Yeah. So oh, I, can I go ahead? Back? Yeah. Um, I just want to shout out Maddie. Um, we had a really great call this past like week and it just felt so good to set new big awesome goals and I'm just really really excited for where she's taking her business and just everything about it and I just want to shout honestly like my whole team out as a collective whole um team team burn bright uh we've been in the top 200 all year and that just says nothing about me that says everything about them and just their consistency and their desire to continue helping people and changing lives and I'm just really excited for what the end of the year holds so i love you guys and jess i can't wait to hear from you because i know we're all gonna take so much away all right bye <laughs> all right well i just wanted to give jess a little bit of an intro so she is on our larger team and we actually got to spend some time on the cruise together for the first time in uh ever i guess <laughs> and it was just really nice to sit down and talk to her about kind of the idea like I know most of my team still works full-time and so we're coaching part-time and I think this totally speaks to like it's okay to love your job and still love coaching and find success with both and I know that she's going to really speak to that because she has had those same like struggles with 
um, with understanding like how does this fit into my life and how can I create success in both. So I'm really excited to hear from you, girl. Um, get out your notepads, guys. Take lots of notes. She's a diamond coach, I believe. So totally real and relatable to where all of us are pushing for as we go into the last quarter of the year. So take it away, my friend. Yay, I'm so excited. You guys, today was a crazy day. It poured down in Houston is where I live and my 30 minute commute took an hour and a half. So I ran in here <laughs> um, and I've got my water and I am fired up because I practiced this three times in that hour and a half commute. <laughs> so <laughs> I have a presentation. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, um, but I want to lay the ground rule that I expect questions in this, like wholeheartedly, this is a shorter presentation because I want you guys to ask questions. Um, the way that I want you to ask questions, though, is all caps, question, and then ask your question. The reason is, at the end of this, it's going to be so much easier to go through the chat and find them than have to like read through people's comments um, to figure out what the question is. So all caps question, ask them throughout. If I end up answering it during the presentation, no big deal. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay. So can everybody see that? Danielle, I see you. Give me a thumbs up if you can see it. Okay, perfect. So this isn't any secret success strategies. Um, I am not going to tell you anything you haven't heard yet unless this is maybe your first month in coaching. The reason is like, quite frankly, you see the same things pop up everywhere that coaches talk about what works for them. And it really comes down to the vital behaviors and consistency. So that's the general theme here, but I really want to talk to you guys a little bit about kind of what I've done um, and want you guys to kind of guide the rest of the conversation through the questions. Uh, but first of all, many of you guys don't know me because this is a bigger team call. So I'm going to go a little bit into who I am and where I got started. And I am a pictures person. So I will have you get to know me through this picture. So for me, I grew up in Virginia um, and I was always an active person growing up. I was involved in sports, never really excellent at any of them, but just kind of jumped around from sports to sports and loved the competitive environment and pushing myself. When I went to college at Virginia Tech, I wasn't playing sports anymore. I was focusing on school and really stayed active just through going to the gym. I still loved being fit and getting into involved in all of that. And after graduation, I moved for my job in engineering to Houston. So I moved to Houston um, and that was one of the things that I thought wasn't going to be as hard as it was. The reason it was hard for me was in college, I joined a sorority and growing up, I'd never really been involved in kind of a female group. Even though I did sports and all that, it just never really clicked. And then joining that sorority in college for me was one of those moments where even though there's still drama, I feel like there's drama everywhere, the pros outweighed all of that. And I found some of my absolute best friends. When I moved to Houston, it hit me and I missed it. And that's going to be an important part because it's really part of the story of why I continued this. Um, later that year, after moving to Houston, my boyfriend and I got our puppy. And that's him all cute and tiny. He's three years old now and 70 pounds, so a lot bigger than that. But when we got him, everything changed. So I don't know how many of you have dogs um, or have kids, but for me, it was like after leaving him in his crate for nine hours every day at work, I didn't want to go to the gym for two more hours and leave him in his crate again. Quite frankly, puppy cuddle sounded a lot better. And so for, <laughs> for the next three months, we paid for gym memberships that we didn't use. And not only was that money down the drain, but our entire kind of relationship with each other and lifestyle changed. We started eating out food. We were both gaining weight. Um, we were agitated. We weren't sleeping well. It just really messed with a lot of things. And come December, my boyfriend was like, enough is enough. I'm going back to the gym. And funny old me was like, well, good for you. We still have a puppy at home. So I'm guess I'm staying home with the puppy and not going to the gym. So um, what you guys don't realize in the background behind all of this is there was somebody I went to high school with for two years who had been messaging me on Instagram, or maybe it was Facebook back then, and introducing me the opportunity of Beachbody. But I'd always had a gym. I felt active. I felt fine. I was in love with what I had going on until I had my dog. So I went home for Christmas that year, and I love my mom, but she told me some of the hardest words I've ever had to hear from her, and she said, you really shouldn't gain any more weight. 
And it was like, whoa, all right, I knew I'd had to buy new pants already for work and I knew I'd been putting on weight, but I didn't think it was that obvious until someone you haven't seen for months kind of calls you out on it. Um, the next day after Christmas, I messaged this girl and signed up. And so I got back into Houston in January, got started with 21 Day Fix, and in those three weeks, I lost six pounds, canceled my gym membership, and signed up as a discount coach. It was just like everything fell into place. I was super happy. I was losing weight, getting results. The pants that I had just spent a bunch of money on a month prior were starting not to fit anymore, and I was a happy girl sharing it on social media. I really had no vision for being this active coach or building a big business, it was purely accountability for myself. And so I was sharing that. Um, and after the first month, because I was signed up as a discount coach, I found out about the success club prizes. So those of you who have coached for longer than a year know that back then success club prizes were monthly and they were smaller things, um, but it was something every month. And I love free things. I just love everything free. Um, I collect like, all the samples at hotels. I'm a lot better about that now, but I was really, really bad back then. And so I thought, okay, I can help three people a month. And that became my goal. And so Success Club was something that I started really early on purely for the little prizes. Um, and it was something that I was able to accomplish by sharing my journey. Summit 2017, which is what that picture is from, changed everything for me in my business. Um, I had earned that trip as a success starter, and it was in New Orleans, so it really wasn't far at all for me. When I went there, what I realized is I saw myself in someone else's story, and it was mainly from the coaching side that somebody had left a six-figure earning job and became a full-time coach, and that was something that I hadn't really it's been exposed to or heard until I went to summit and it started to turn my brains and make me think of, you know, maybe this is a possibility. Maybe this could be something that I can look forward to when we have kids one day and give me a different level of flexibility than a corporate job that was doing well for me. And I was comfortable, but might not be what I looked for when I had family. And if I decide that in the moment, it's a little late. So Summit changed everything for me. I started looking at this more from a business perspective and started growing a team, stayed consistent with uh, Success Club. And the next big pivotal moment happened when Natalie uh, announced having a team retreat. It was a diamond um, growth retreat. So diamonds and above were invited. There were other qualifications. And I just love a good challenge. So that retreat is one that I earned. Um, it being something where community was the focus and getting to spend time together was really what drove me to get there. And then through all of that kind of work, just month on month on month, I was able to also earn my first success club trip that Danielle mentioned we met at. So that's the picture from the cruise. And we have already been um, invited to the Punta Cana and earned it. So it's been one of those journey where it started completely different from where it is now, but it's still so grounded in just this idea that I love the community more than anything else. And what I want you to maybe see is if any of that story kind of relates to you. So I didn't even have a minute to print this out. And what I want you guys to know for the way that I'm gonna present this is I'm gonna go layer deeper and deeper from each uh, slide. So it's gonna start kind of high level and I'm probably gonna answer some of those questions you have from the first couple of slides as I keep going. So really kind of what's helped me grow. I mean, this is one of those things where it's like, all right, here's the super high level idea. I just sat down and wrote this and I was like, well, this is what it is. I created non-negotiables and I've stuck with them for months and months and months in my business. Um, I have a system for organizing my thoughts and prioritizing my actions. I am super type A. I'm a three on the Enneagram test if you guys have taken that. Um, and so for me, I really need this focus and direction for my business. Open communication at home, I'm going to totally talk about that, how I ended up integrating this business with living with my boyfriend um, and trying to manage just our lives together. Investing back in the business is my absolute favorite slide of this PowerPoint, and I cannot wait for you guys to see that. But one thing that I realized is I have always invested in my business in one way or another, and you may not realize how broad of a description that could be. So when I start to show you that slide and you'll see what I actually did to invest back in my business, you're like, yeah, I could probably do a lot of those without having this huge financial um, burden. Personal development, 
this is a huge thing and that really happened for me after summit starting to realize that if i wanted to grow the business i had to grow myself uh, and just a lot of that kind of came from getting more ingrained in the community i mean the fact that you guys are here on this call you're going to hear from myself and the other leaders and the national wake-up call and all of that that people talk about personal development all the time there's a reason it's one of the four vital behaviors like i said and then success partners so the call last week was awesome from maggie um, that has been a major part of me growing my business and just staying involved it's helped me build some of the best friends because we've gotten a lot closer and worked closer together but also what what's been the thing with me with success partners is if i had multiple and i don't have the same i have now than i did two years ago there's always been a different purpose and i've been reflective enough in my business and the gaps that i had to understand who i need to partner with or at least what kind of partner i needed and reached out to a mentor to find that person so let's dig a little bit deeper what are my non-negotiables hit success club every month non-negotiable um it really started out because I just wanted all the free stuff first, but I remember attending one of my first team calls and Kelsey Smith was on it and she said, Success Club 5 is lazy. And I was like, oh, okay, way to be a wake up call. Um, and it's not even that that's what woke me up. It was the idea that like, why am I not going for more? Like, yeah, with Success Club 5, I got the free shirt or the free sample or whatever it was that month, but like, why am I not even thinking about more? And after that call, I was able to hit Success Club 10 for the first time ever. It was just the idea of thinking of something bigger. Um, committing to a workout program, you guys, this is a non-negotiable. Like, you've gotta do it. If you can't even be talking to other people if you're not doing a workout program. So commit to one if you're struggling with, you know, any sort of, like, health things, then we've got the nutrition programs. Um, there is something for you to commit to. Show up on social media. So this is an interesting one, being a full-time job. Um, I have had three different kinds of jobs since I started coaching. One was a very clean eight to five. I didn't bring my laptop home. Um, it was just my pure hours in the office and then my time at home. And that was golden and I didn't realize it. Uh, the job I had after that was in logistics. I was on call 24 um, seven. It was so different than what I was used to. My hours turned into the weekends and now I'm in sales and marketing and I'm traveling a lot. In fact, I wrote this whole thing on an airplane um, and it's just totally changed. And so I can't, I don't have a routine anymore. Like after this, I'm actually going out to a work event again. So my days look every single week different and that's been an adjustment for me with the business. Another non-negotiable, drink Shakeology every day. Um, just like the workout programs, if you're gonna talk about it, you wanna talk from your story. And so if you're drinking it every day, you're really gonna start to feel the benefits. Personal development, can't say it enough. What I want to say about it though, is that realizing what I need in my life for personal development isn't necessarily what the coach sitting next to me needs. And so start to do that self-reflection and figure out what, where do you have a gap in your personal development and what resource do you need? And if you come up with a topic and don't know, there's a coach in here who's probably struggled with that or helped somebody with it, who has the podcast, the book, the whatever you're looking for. Um, national wake up calls and team calls every week. You guys, if I want to grow a business, I've got to continue to learn. And these are some of the best ways to do that. Um, it's also ways that I was able to relate to other people. I was hearing from, you know, others accomplishments in the team calls and it made me want to reach out and go, what are you doing and have conversations on the side. Uh, and then tracking my conversations, this is kind of cool. So I talked about being like super organized and like needing lists for myself. Tracking my conversations is huge because when you're messaging people, if there's not a system that you have to track, it's kind of going to get lost. It really kind of is. Instagram is not very friendly in trying to like find people's names, especially when half of the people don't use their real name for their profile and you can't find them anymore. So tracking them has been a huge, huge part. Um, and there's a couple of things that I kind of uh, had to learn to find the system that worked for me. So let's keep going, digging a little bit deeper. So hitting success club every month. Oh man, what's it take you guys? There is no secret sauce to this either. Um, but one thing about it is it kind of takes this unwavering belief that you can do it. And it's like, I can tell you that, but you like might not understand it until you understand it. And it's like, 
Oh man. So you have to believe 100% that you can do it. And I look back at the last 30 months that I've been in success club and it's like some months I did it in the first 24 hours of the month and other months I'm sitting like I am right now, full transparency, the 28th of the month and I'm at success club four and I'm like not even shook. Like I know that I will hit it and it will happen somehow. And it's going to kind of happen throughout as I go down this list, you'll figure it out. Um, consistency and showing others what you have to offer. So this is huge. I mean, the consistency part, it, when someone sees you in and out, what you have to offer is your service as a coach and being there is accountable for them and following up. If they don't see you committed, why are they going to think that you're going to be committed to coaching them? That's just flat out like a great question to ask yourself. So show that you're committed. Um, and then that will start to help people understand that you can help them get there. Be excited about what you have to offer. This was a big one for me as I grew as a coach because we started to launch new products, new programs, and all of that. And there is a program that just didn't work for me. I'm not going to say it out loud because I know that there's other people who absolutely love that program, but it irked me through and through. And it's one of the only programs I couldn't finish. And let me tell you, I can't sell someone on that program. I cannot get someone excited about it because I don't want it. It's like trying to tell about somebody that they should have the white chocolate covered pretzel when I really think they should have the dark chocolate. It doesn't work for me. And so find what you're excited about and share that because whatever you're excited about is going to come out. It really is. Take the time to build trust. I actually would love, I'll look through these later. I don't have the chat open, but I would love for people to say what they think the average time is for, um, for someone to actually sign up. So between like starting your conversations and them signing up, I think for me, my average is around six months and all like nerdy numbers me is actually starting to track this. So maybe in a year I'll have a presentation that shares what the true average is by raw data. Um, but if I were to have to guess, I think it's between four to six months for my numbers. So, so often I find new coaches just give up after three weeks and like, um, did you expect results in your own you know, fitness journey in three weeks for all, you know, all of it. No, you're going to see parts and parts and a lot of this grows. So the results you're seeing in three weeks are probably just building relationships. And unfortunately there's not a success club number attached to that. Um, following up, this is where your tracking is going to be huge. Knowing your conversion ratio. So if you don't know what that is, that is the ratio from how many conversations with new people you have to have to how many people actually sign up. And the way that you can do that is by tracking. Once you know how many people you have to have a conversation with, how many of those respond, answer, how many from who responded are actually interested, and then from how many are interested actually sign up. There, you can start tracking that, but once you know that number, if you're like, okay, for every 100 people that I message, one person signs up, how many people do you need a message in a month to hit success club? It's an average. It's not always going to work out, but it's an average. And if you can know your number, then you can look back at months that didn't work out and go, why? Hmm, there's why. A lot of the times, right? Or maybe it was you were pushing for something that you weren't excited for, but this list kind of hits a lot of it. Not counting on anyone. I'm telling you that if you put the pressure on somebody, for me, I've noticed that when that happened, they always end up turning to no. And so if you end up having the mindset of, I don't, I'm not even counting on you. Like, come on, if you want to do it, you can do it, but no big deal. And truly meaning it, then, then that makes so much easier because you aren't counting on them and you're going to keep working on making other relationships anyways. Momentum is real, but doesn't last with more fuel. So there have been months where I transition jobs and I really, really didn't put the time into this business. And I still hit success club because I had busted my butt the months before. But what I could tell you is after that month of transition, if I didn't get back into the train and keep working hard and pushing, I wasn't going to hit success club anymore. This, there's something about having to continue to feed that fire. And so that fire will burn for a little bit at night, but if you don't keep putting more firewood at it, it's not going to keep going. And that's exactly how momentum is. And then sometimes doing whatever it takes. And I love that you guys are in the middle of a flash sale right now because that kind of falls under whatever it takes. Throw an incentive. Tell them that Morning Meltdown 100, um, the sale ends the end of the month. You don't know what September sales are, even though we kind of know they go through September. 
that's not that big of a deal. And those are a little bit of the whatever it takes to hit the, you know, hit the numbers you need. So let me keep going. Organization and prioritization. So little questions I ask myself, what is my goal? Are my actions bringing me closer to accomplishing my goal? How much time am I willing to work? This is huge. Mainly, not because of the number of hours you're willing to work, but because of the expectations you have attached to the hours you wanna work. And what that's going to come down to is how efficient you are during your time, just straight up. And so if you're saying, I am willing to put one hour a week, I hope you can do more than that, but if you're willing to do one hour a week, that one hour better be spent doing the business building activities. And you know what those are based off of when you start to see results. That's, you know, inviting, following up. It's not getting all pretty and fun on Canva and picking the right song to your Instagram story. That's not it. What is my priority? And this might be different for you than it is for me, but knowing what your priority is is going to help you adjust what to do on your list. Because let's be frank, there's always more you want to do than you have time for everywhere in your life. Laundry, cooking kids, trips, everything. What am I willing to sacrifice? This is big because there are sacrifices for this job and you kind of have to make that decision. And is there anything I can reuse? Um, hello, case in point earlier this week, Mackenzie sent like amazing Instagram, uh, slides already for your story. You're not going to make your own because that takes up time and hey, how many hours are you willing to put in? Use those slides, it's not that big of a deal. Um, there are certain times where maybe you wanna start new things, but it comes down to what your goal is and is it a priority and how it falls into that. All right, a couple of things that have helped me. No comparison at all, just seriously, especially in the part-time world where a lot of the news that we see comes from full-time coaches, just don't do it to yourself, I promise. My favorite planner is the Rise Up Planner from Moira. I've checked out a lot of different planners. This one has been amazing, the one I've used the most, um, mainly because of how it's split up, but also because of the mental aspect she puts in at the end, like your wins every day. If you just go to Amazon, you can see a bunch of pictures. I don't have to go into it. Brain dump lists help me. I have got to get out all of the ideas in my head and then I prioritize them. But if I don't put them down, it's too much junk going on in there. Success Cup Partners, I talked about that. Um, the notebook method, I'm gonna share you guys how I actually track my method or my conversations now. That's another slide. The health and wellness assessment form, this was kind of a national wake up call a couple months ago, earlier this year, about being able to collect more information from people before you present a share cart because it's completely personalized and a lot of times too, you're able to kind of upsell more things because they, they're looking for more solutions. But the whole idea of the form is solution-based. Where do they have a problem? And we know as in the back of our head as coaches what the solution is tied to that problem. Understanding the coach online office, this has been really helpful for me. And just straight up, I know that office through and through. I know where the trainings are. I know where the coach news is. I know where my um, – volume is. And if this is something that you guys don't know, then we're going to have to do another call about it. But the coach online office is huge. I check it every single morning. Um, and Google streak. So I'll talk about that a bit more as well. Let's keep going because I want to leave time for questions. The notebook method. So this is basically the idea of the notebook method. It is literally for me in a notebook. It's a spiral notebook. It's right here. And I have a new page for every calendar day. Quite frankly, for me and the full-time job and how my life goes back and forth, I look at my numbers on a weekly basis. The business activity tracker is daily, and I have to just sum that crap up and go, what's the weekly thing? Because there are certain weeks that I can work five, six, seven days a week, and there's other ones that I'm working two. And at the end of the day, I'm still accomplishing all of those things in the seven days. It's just not always every day. So that's been a huge thing for me is looking at my stuff in the sense of a week. And the notebook method has been huge for me counting how many conversations I'm having. These are just a couple of the, and I'll share all these slides, by the way, you guys will get this presentation, but this is like some of the ways that you can do it. You can start to create your own little code of like different things you want to um, remember about them, but it's just a quick glance for when you have follow-ups. You can look back in this notebook and go, oh, every star I'm going to follow up with first, 
right? That's who you got the closest to um, interest in the challenge pack. All right, my Google streak. I started this earlier this year and I've had it on my list forever. And I just like, oh, I got so overwhelmed. Um, but I'm so glad that I have it now. So some of the things looking back that I wish I might have had earlier was an email specifically just for coaching. I used to use my personal email and having an email specific for coaching has been really helpful for one, feeling more professional, but also just kind of organizing my thoughts around coaching in the business and whatever else I sign up for. Um, Cause I do, I sign up for other coaches newsletters and I get those and I store them in an other emails folder, but it helps me get more ideas. Um, Google streak has been amazing for that. And here's kind of the, highlight for how I set up my streak. For those of you that don't know, streak is a free add-on for Google and, or Gmail rather. And you create these like folders or like a, a it's a, called a pipeline. Um, and so like I have my different pipelines here, prospects, bod renewals, customers. And within each pipeline, you create those stages. So I've kind of snapshot a stage at the top here. And what you can see, that's my prospect pipeline is I am tracking the people in this pipeline, and it's simply by collecting emails. So that has been one of the biggest conversations the last five, six months really, is get an email list. So, in, so now when people are interested, I always collect the email, and they go somewhere in the street pipeline, and if I didn't have something already set up for them, I'm creating a new stage. So there's a ton of them, as you can see. But it really helps me see what's going on. Um, bod renewals has been a huge one for my streak pipeline. I send out a message on the third week of the month before that, hey, reminder, your bod is coming up for renewal. Here are your options. Let it auto renew, start with a new package, start coaching. And if they don't want any of those, they can cancel and write back. But that's really not an option that I give them. <laughs> so I will find out by people responding where they end up, and I get to track all of those renewals, which help me kind of understand. Can I get success club points maybe too from somebody who's new and help them benefit from, you know, a bundle and saving money? I love that. So let me keep going. I'm almost, almost done. Communication at home. Um, I actually passed this slide by my boyfriend, Kyle, and be like, anything else to add? Um, because he's been through with all of those different jobs living with me here in Houston. And with those different jobs came completely different hours and came my own personal struggle of how to fit this business in. And so I have realized that every month I have to share with him what are my goals and not only what they are, because quite frankly, like if I say Star Diamond, it's all over his head, but like why it's, why it's important to me. What, you know, what is it attached to? When I was going for Diamond, it was attached to the retreat and he could understand what a retreat was. Um, sharing what it takes to hit that goal. And a lot of times for me, I'm able to say, all right, in order to hit that goal, like I've got to work a couple hours on Saturday morning instead of going to brunch or, you know, I'll put it in a sense that he understands. And that really was helpful. And one of the biggest times that what it takes to hit the goal kind of impacted the two of us was the success club trip. There were different like spend money um, levels that you would get based on your success club points. If you had five throughout the whole year, you would get a certain amount of money. And if you hit 10 every month, you would hit another amount of money. Well, I had a certain month where I was struggling and I said, all right, it's three days before the end of the month. I'm sitting at success club six and here's a conversation we have to have. I'm two people away from hitting success club 10 and continuing the streak to potentially get twice the amount of money. But it means that we're going to have to skip date night this week because I'm going to grind it out every night. And he was like, yeah, I don't care enough. I'd rather have date night. And we had date night, but it was literally a decision that we made together. So um, if, it, if I cared more personally, it probably would have been a different conversation. But for me, I just wanted him to have a little bit of say in that. And that's how it went. Creating work hours, um, that has ebbed and flowed based on my jobs, but that was helpful at a time um, or a limit when coaching is done. So right now that we kind of have more of the limit uh, lifestyle. So after nine o'clock, I'm not allowed to work coaching because I realized I would coach on my laptop forever. Um, and we just kind of miss a lot of our bonding time at night. Boundaries with cell phone use. He kind of brought that up to me. It was like, yeah, you can't be on date night answering Instagram messages and this and that. So my cell phone is gone when we decide we're having time together. And a lot of this actually came from uh, 
the five love languages test. So for me, it was like uh, acts of service is my number one. And for him, it's quality time. Well, he didn't feel like it was quality time when I'm sitting next to him, but on my phone. Surprise. So <laughs> that was one of the big things that came out of that test was understanding how to kind of network or, or work our relationship together. And then just having an open platform going forward that like he can come and talk to me if there's something that is bothering him about the way I work the business. Cause I'm not going to stop, but I want it to work with our relationship. And then my favorite slide. This is so exciting. We're going to take a minute to go through this. I put the income disclaimer in here cause I'm sharing full numbers with you guys. It goes through the end of um, July because I didn't want to have to deal with doing last minute August stuff, but this actually didn't take me very long to make because I track all of my expenses and my income with Beachbody. I track all my expenses because if you don't know, they're tax deductible. So start now. Um, it's a simple Excel sheet that I use. I simply just put the date, the amount, what I bought, and that's it. Um, but at least I have it there. And then my income I'm tracking as well. And so what I want to really highlight with this, and I'm so excited to share it, is the different investments that I made in this business. The first one I did was opening a spouse account that was hitting Emerald. Um, and he literally sat as a spouse account um, for a year and a half before I worked his business. And most of that year and a half was me just paying the business fee. As soon as I had another coach there, I wasn't buying Shakeology from him unless I was buying anything more than my personal account. That's personally how I worked it. So he's, after the initial investment, there really wasn't that big of an expense. The next one and one of my all time favorite investments to tell coaches is three day refresh. It is, it'll cost you what you earn from a challenge pack, but it is something that can come back for you so many times. Just having that personal story where people are looking for a reset, there's holidays and you can share I've done it. Here's what you can be aware of. Here's what um, I personally have as my favorite dinner or whatever, but relating to people directly. Summit was an investment. Um, and one thing here is like my investment started small. I always kind of kept my investments with my income growth, but as my income started to grow, which look where that happened when I hit diamond, um, then that really allowed me to start to put different level of money back into this business. I was able to um, grow my Instagram with Jumper Media. I'm not using them anymore, but it just built me a certain level of followers where now I have people to connect with. Um, I was able to hire a virtual assistant who I still use today, and that has opened up certain activities for me that I didn't want doing. What I want you to see here is that this was a personal decision to invest basically all of my income back into the business. I happened to be in a place where that was a decision that I was willing to make. And I'm not at all trying to be on this call saying that's what you need to do, but some level investment I think is absolutely necessary. And one of those could be three day refresh, right? Just having some skin in the game as a coach and a way to continue to grow your business with products and, and, or personally, like I went to a, um, Bob Heilig's conference earlier this year. So hopefully that makes sense. And one last thing, personal development. I wanted to share with you guys my current favorites. Um, this has changed a couple of times throughout the years, but Get Over Your Damn Self is the book that like stopped me in my tracks. It's major tough love and it put me into diamond. Um, and then these three podcasts are literally on constant rotation for me right now throughout the week. So if you don't have a podcast app, you better download that before the end of this call. <laughs> Cause if I didn't make it clear, personal development is huge for me. Um, and I know a lot of other coaches and then I have time for questions. So let me stop sharing my screen and see what's been blowing up on this chat. <laughs> um, alrighty. So great. I see questions. I'm super excited. So first question, Alrighty, I gotta hold this. Um, all right, question from do do do. Question from Maggie. With your changing schedules, do you shoot for a power or do you find power pockets to be more effective? For me, I am way more effective when I sit for two hours at a time. So I really do try to do the core of my business um, in a power hour, multiple hour kind of situation. Um, and then my power pockets are kind of more maintenance. So I'll set up all my brand new conversations during that power hour 
where I go through who's watching my stories, who's new, and send those messages. And then my power pockets are responding to who responded to me. A little bit more lighter and easier to follow. Um, let's see. Next one. Question from Danielle. What has been the biggest tip for you to building momentum after a time where you felt stuck? So the biggest thing for me um, was really just having that coach accountability. Um, basically getting to acknowledge a point of, I just had a really hard month and I feel super low, but I know I want to be somewhere else. I'm partnering up with somebody pretty much on a weekly level to say, I need you to check in and I need to like, I need that tough love. That's my personal style is needing someone with tough love who's going to call me out. And knowing that I was going to have a call with somebody was enough motivation for me to be like, yeah, I can't show up next week and say I haven't done anything. <laughs> and so that got me to do action. Uh, next one. Are you able to provide information on what, how you track? Yep. Shared that. Um, like I said, I was probably going to answer some of them while we were talking. Another question. I thought I saw some more question. What's the difference between a prospect and a lead? Okay. Awesome. So mm, I'm super excited about this. Okay. The prospect is somebody who I'm talking to on Instagram who is interested. Like they get to a point where they are like, yeah, tell me more. Or they want to try a free sample. It's somebody who hasn't signed up yet. A lead is a benefit of being an Emerald in Success Club. So if you're not already Emerald and you're not hitting Success Club, this is a huge benefit that the company does. There are people who are signing up from Beachbody.com or Beachbody On Demand and not referencing a specific coach. And so those people still get assigned coaches. But what Beachbody does is goes, I want them to be set up for success as much as possible. And what that looks like is putting them with a coach who's been showing up in the business. So if you're an Emerald and hitting six class club, you are into the pool for receiving leads and they'll show up in your coach online office. There's different tiers for if you get commission from them or not, that's all kind of in the FAQ. But the idea is Beachbody is awarding you with people who, um, who have signed up without a specific coach reference. All right, let's see. Any other questions now that I think I've gotten through the ones, unless I missed it and, and you can earn. Yeah, so I mean, I do make money from some of them. It just depends on what tier I was on. Um, some, are, some are income earning and some aren't. Who has questions? I'll ask a question. Yeah. Um, how do you know when it's like, I mean, have you ever gotten to a point, maybe it's like the middle of the month and you're like, whoa, all right, I haven't been doing this and I haven't been doing that. Like this kind of goes along with like the motivation thing, but how do you just dial yourself back in and do the whatever it takes, get back to like the, whatever it takes mindset. Like, have you ever had, cause I mean like all these other things are going on in your life. And so like, has anything ever like rocked you to get back to that core to say, okay, like. I'm going to show back up and get this moving. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, the right personal development. I've literally had to stop three books in the middle of them because it was something exciting back then when I was kind of rocking and rolling and looking for something extra. But when it wasn't what like rocked me, then it like, I didn't even read it. And then I was super, super stuck. And so for me, it kind of came down to like, just kind of hearing the right tough love and, um, that came from finding my, my right podcasts. Awesome. Question, what do you use to track conversations? So I literally use a notebook and I use the notebook method. Um, I'll post my like presentation um, and all the like leaders can post it as well. It's in a Google drive and um, it's super, super simple. I've tried like Excel sheets, knowing I'm a numbers person and like, with filters and it, just, it didn't work. <laughs> I can carry that notebook with me anywhere. Um, but it really is helpful for me to do it at one time, kind of sitting and writing out all the numbers. Sorry, I have another question. Yeah. Sorry. I think you're wanting to know how you get from the notebook to your streak. Oh, okay. So the notebook, so the way it starts for me is, oh, I just saw that second question. Yeah. So basically, I'll sit down in my power hour and I go, okay, let me go look into my Instagram who's looking at my stories. That's the first place that I look. Um, and part of why that works um, is because I'm constantly 
liking and following new people so that I have new eyes in my stories. If I'm not having new eyes, this is going to be a kind of hard activity, but definitely make that part of your power hour to add new faces. Um, so I look into my stories of who kind of has been looking at my oldest one, the one that's like 24 hours. And I'll go through there of who I don't know. And I kind of do like a, I don't know, it's a little bit of a copy and paste in a sense that it's how can I add more value to you with a personal aspect? So I will go to the person's profile. If they're a coach, I don't message them. In fact, I probably unfriend them at that point. And then, <laughs> and then if it's somebody who is profile is blocked, um, there's really not a lot of personal stuff I can say other than if something from like, I mean, is private, right? Unless there's something from their profile that stands out. But I try to find something that I truly relate to. Um, a lot of the times it's dog moms. And I'll say like, hi, whatever, then insert um, personal sentence. So your dog's super cute, how old is he or she, or whatever it is, something to capture their attention and show that like, I'm not just a robot that wrote this. And then my go-to line is, thanks for watching. It's maybe I should like look at what I actually say, but it, the idea is like, thanks for watching. Um, my stories, I hope you find inspiration and motivation in them. Is there any topic you'd like me to talk about more? And what that really helps me is put in the sense of, I'm here to add value. And why are you actually watching me? Because people come back and they're like, oh, I just love watching like your different workout moves each day. Cause I do home workouts and I try to help me change it up. Or I've had people straight up tell me they watch me for a dog. Um, but what it does is it gives me that answer of, Hey, I'm here to add value. I'm, I'm really, I'm not trying to like encroach on you. How can I help you more? And I find out why they're watching me and it helps me start that conversation super authentically. So that ends up being, um, thanks. So yeah, it's super, super simple, but it's just like, how can I add more value? And basically then when they respond, I circle it. And a lot of times, depending on their response, like, it might actually end up adding a conversation of, yeah, I watch you for like motivation because I've been trying to get into a new routine. Okay, let's keep asking more questions. That's always the key. Ask more questions. It's like, well, what have you been doing? Um, tell me more about your goals. Like just trying to figure out so much more until they're basically like, okay, what do you do? I need to know. I need to know. And when they get to that point and they want more information or I find this massive gap that it's like, oh, you really could, um, I was like, we have this perfect program. Have you ever considered something like that? They're like, no, I need to know more. I said, okay, great. What's your email? So I can send you more information. And it's that simple. Like I literally just flat out stop the conversation. I'm like, what's your email? So I can send you more info. And the email that I sent, so this is, this is when I put them in my streak pipeline. It goes under, um, like sent basic info. <laughs> I'm really, really simple with it now. And so the sent basic info is a script that I have. It's pre-written for everybody. And the idea is, Hey, I'm so glad you're interested. This isn't word for word, but it's the idea. Like, I'm so glad you're interested in more information. Um, first of all, I want you to know that everything I do is personalized. And so, um, here is a 10 minute form I want you to fill out so I can get to know you better and see how what I have to offer is a good fit. And then I go into a little bit of like, there's all different kinds of workouts. Um, there's different supplements and I'll be able to help link you up with what's right for you. Um, we also have an online community for support. Like can't wait to get to know you better. Love coach Jess, something like that, but it's general enough that I'm not like having to tweak it between people. It's specific enough that I've given them information that it's online and there's options. And then I get them catered into the health form. And so the next step from there is either following up of, hey, did you get my email? I haven't seen your follow up. I haven't seen your form response yet. Or, hey, I got your form response. Let's start talking options. That's, that's how I end up kind of organizing it. And Jess, I bet that took a while to set up, right? I, had, I paid extra for my assistant to set it up. Just that was like, part of my investment was like, I got to a point that it was eating at me every day on my to do list. And I'm like, I guess I care about it enough. I'm just going to pay the $50 for the setup. So she set it up for me. We had a conference call, like a 30 minute call of like, here's the idea. Here's the pipelines I want. And it started out with just customer, um, lead and prospect. And then as I got more comfortable with it, I was adding more stages to my prospect with like the free samples. I had the idea of 
well, this would be really helpful for FOD renewals and started to kind of add more. I know that I think Kelsey uses it for like coaches and tracking their rank and stuff. Like it really can have a lot of potential, but I got to the point where I was like, if I don't start with anything, I'm not going to get anywhere. So yeah. I set up streak a couple years ago too. Um, Danielle, if you were thinking for yourself or something, um, I just Googled Melanie Mitro. She did like an 18 minute video. Um, and I am so like tech challenged when it comes to stuff like that. I literally like minimize, like split my screen and I followed her 18 minute video with like pause, start, pause, start. And I was literally like doing what she said and it helped me set everything up in about an hour. Um, but it does take like a lot of focus and learning it and then getting used to it cause it's new. Um, but I'm with Jess, it's super effective. Yeah, Kelsey also did a call where she walked people through step by step. Um, I wonder if I can find that recording link. And then the other, the reason it's so helpful, let alone to know like truly how many people are in my pipeline is like, hey, you have a flash sale. Um, here's all of the people who are actually interested. Hello, email blast. Um, and you can put in like different variables to put in their name, like in the email without sending an email to every person. So that helps speed it up a lot. I want to ask this question. We can end with this. I just love this question. They always ask it on the national wake up call. Okay. Jessica, how has beach body coaching changed your life? I don't think you know the answer to this. So I don't, I want to know. And we all want to know because you just gave <laughs> an amazing presentation. <laughs> at the end of the day, how has coaching changed your life? Coaching got me my full-time job that I have now. I kid you not. So not a lot of people know this story. Um, I was an engineer working for a major oil and gas company, making great money, but quite frankly, like wasn't really fulfilled and didn't know that there was a full-time job that I could feel, feel fulfilled at until I was like doing coaching and go, well, it'd be nice if I felt this way about my nine to five. Right. And I was in my logistics job um, where at that time, there are companies that provide services to the, the role that I had, and they would meet with us to check in on how their services are doing. So I had a girl come meet with me for lunch, check on my service. I hadn't met her before. And um, we don't really talk too much business. It was like, hey, are you doing? Here I am. And then we got into the conversation of Beachbody because I'm so passionate about it. I started sharing her what I do. And after 10 minutes, she's like, I'm sold. She goes, you'd be really good at my job. Like, this is what I do. Like you have a service and you, you like sell it basically to other people because you're so passionate about it and you know, it makes their lives better. And I was like, yeah, must be nice. Like I, there's no way that that marketing role is going to pay my bills when I'm coming from an engineering job. That literally was my mindset. And she looked at me and she goes, you might be surprised. And I was like, all right, that's weird. And then two weeks later, another company from the same industry, like their competitor, I saw them at a happy hour. Dude, I've never met before, comes up to me and was like, hey, if you're ever unhappy, like, let me know. We've got opportunities. And I'm like, what is going on? This is August last year. And I was having conversations about career. I wasn't happy about the options that where it was going. I knew I wanted to go marketing with Exxon, but they gave me a three to five year time frame. Oops, I said the company. Okay. So, <laughs> um, and I mean, they gave me a three to five year timeline. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like now. So that weekend at Friday, I called up my, um, the first person I'd met from one of the companies and was like, Hey, I know I met with the other girl from your company. Um, I don't know if you're hiring, but I'm interested. And he's like, well, are you serious? Because if you are, I'll make moves. 20 minutes later, he calls me back and goes, CEO wants your resume. So <laughs> that's kind of how it started. Um, was me just sharing with that with her that I love this business and being so passionate about talking about a service is what made her realize like, yeah, she's an engineer, but she can talk to people. And it, it put me down the job and now I'm almost a year in and I'm happier than I've ever been. <laughs> So it's changed my life like crazy. <laughs> That's such a cool story. Yeah, I don't think you knew that. <laughs> no, I didn't. It kind of goes with like, this really helps us be successful in every area of our life, you know, because we, we grow so much as human beings and it just elevates every area, whether it's that, you know, this is your full-time thing or it helps your full-time job that you're in 
Um, I just love that. That's such a cool story. Thank oh, you. and by the way, to make it full circle, she's a discount coach on Kyle's account. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh my gosh. That yeah. was awesome. Danielle, you want to add anything? Anybody want to add anything? No. Thanks all of you guys for hanging out with me so long. I love it. So good, Jess. And um, I know y'all Labor Day weekend's coming up, but like seriously, hustle through Friday. Get your get your goals done so you can enjoy the weekend with your family and unplug a little bit and come back ready for all the pumpkin spice everything next week and new month. Yep. Bye guys. Bye guys. Thanks, Jess. Bye. I'll post the link before I head out to my work event. Perfect. Bye.